Mr. Bondi, uh, very good to see you, sir. Congratulations uh, to you on, on your nomination and to all the other panelists on, on your nominations. Mr. Bondi, Bahrain recently committed to partner with Task Force uh, 59 and will be the first nation to partner with that group. According to NavSense, they agreed to collaborate in October on manned unmanned teaming exercise uh, to evaluate advanced unmanned surface vessels. Will you commit to support Bahrain's partnership with the Fifth Fleet's recently created Unmanned Systems Task Force, Task Force 59, and will you work to promote other Gulf states joining this uh, important initiative? Senator, I absolutely can support that. Uh, I think it's a very important initiative in order to uh, continue to promote uh, freedom of navigation and safe transport uh, in the, uh, on the high seas. Very good. Sir, in light of the Abraham Accords and Israel's entry into CENTCOM, will you commit to push as hard as possible to get the Israeli military as integrated as possible in the multilateral activities that CENTCOM and the Fifth Fleet lead out of Bahrain, including maritime security efforts in the Gulf and Red Sea, and regional efforts on missile defense and counter drone efforts? Senator, I believe that uh, moving forward on building the relationship between Israel and Bahrain in a broad spectrum of areas, all the way, you know, starting with military and security, as you're describing, and then moving all the way across to uh, economy, trade, education, technology, and people-to-people -people ties is incredibly important. Um, and certainly, if confirmed, I would like to find a way to use the convening power of the United States in order to involve Israel more closely in planning and discussions related to uh, preserving security in Bahrain and the Gulf region. Thank you. And, and, and lastly, sir, will you commit to work with CENTCOM and the Fifth Fleet to get an Israeli naval liaison officer assigned to NAVSENT in Manama? Yes, Senator, I admit that I'm unaware of that uh, specific initiative, but uh, I, uh, if confirmed, I absolutely would want to consult with the Department of Defense, with NAVSENT, and assist in any way that I could play a useful role. That makes sense, Mr. Bondi. I'll, I'll look forward to, uh, should you be confirmed, uh, following up with you and, and your consultation with DOD, and if there's any way I could be of assistance and furtherance of that effort, uh, I'll be happy to do so. Ms. Stewart, um, congratulations to you as well. We continue to see the uh, foundation of strategic arms control crumble away. Um, I, years ago, uh, spent a brief stint uh, uh, of time working on the staff of uh, former chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, Dick Luger. So I feel especially responsible to ensure the legacy of arms control is protected and renewed. To do that, we must have partners and processes that we can trust. At the same time, we want to ensure that we don't erode our defensive capabilities by entering into an agreement that is one-sided. What are the core areas of New START, uh, Ms. Stewart, that need to be updated in order for the U.S. and Russia to have confidence in the agreement? Thank you, Senator, for that question. I definitely appreciate your background in this issue, and I'm, I'm very glad to hear that you um, are concerned about the future in this arena, because I am as well. Um, because of the downturn in relations with the Russian Federation, effective arms control is more valuable now than it was in 2010. And it is important to maintain the boundaries on nuclear competition, even as we hold the Russian Federation to account for its reckless and aggressive actions. Um, I think the verifiable limits on Russian intercontinental range nuclear forces allow us to make better informed judgments about the sufficiency of U.S. nuclear forces and help diminish the possibility of a costly and dangerous nuclear arms race. As you know, New START also provides a forum for ongoing dialogue on strategic stability and nuclear weapons at a time when tensions between our countries are elevated and bilateral relations are increasingly challenged. As to your specific question, 
it would be useful in the next steps beyond the New START treaty to address the non-strategic nuclear weapons of, of the Russian Federation, to understand their uh, limitations, numbers, and parameters in a way that could comprehensively address our concerns with respect to a lack of strategic st stability uh, by their increasing presence. Um, so uh, as for the specifics of uh, a next step agreement beyond New START, I think we definitely have to consider um, has, as, as many administrations have, how to bring in the non-strategic nuclear weapons and the novel delivery systems, including the unmanned delivery platforms to address their concerns um, from a strategic stability vantage. Thank you. I think my time is, is uh, about to end. Um, I am curious um, uh, whether there's any interest in Russia for a revised INF after uh, the Trump administration pulled out on account of the fact that it had essentially become in, in a unilateral agreement. So um, unless you have a yes or no answer on that, uh, which I would welcome, uh, maybe we can talk about <coughs> that later. Thank you. I look forward to discussing this with you if confirmed. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Senator Cruz.